Hello and welcome back to the finals of Victory Road to Frankfurt featuring GT Tour. Uh, for the last time, I am Jamie Boyd. I am joined by Maver Rock and we are going to be featuring the final here between two great players. Uh, we've got Fran Francesco Pipero coming out. Uh, I was going to say from Italy, but also from Italy, we have Antonio Raimondo. Yeah, and Jamie, I would not have been surprised if you told me that that Sun team that we've seen everywhere would be in finals, but I would be surprised... Uh, if you knew who his last opponent was, which is easily that hard counter with that, uh, with the Weezing and uh, Reggie Gigas team, you know, it's very interesting to see, really interesting to see that he was able to make it all the way to finals with a team that won last night at a, at a local for us and won the last three regionals and is definitely going to be dominant in Frankfurt itself as we move, uh, as we look ahead towards there. Well, let's both hope so, because we surely have going to figure it out our counters at that point. But also, let's not hope so, because we've seen that team too much. Uh, but apparently not enough at the moment, because we are going to be featuring it one more fight, one more time uh, on this stream, at least. So, uh, yeah, we've got that Sun team. We've also got the, the Calyrex and the Zashian team that we featured uh, already a couple of times for Francesco uh, that we've seen with some very cool techs as well. Uh, the Energy Ball on Calyrex is uh, a very surprising tech, but one that makes perfect sense as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that picking up uh, in popularity as we go in the format because Gastrodon is everywhere. Uh, Gastrodon is a very important to be a Pokemon to be able to defeat, especially if you've got something like the Blastoise uh, that, as we saw in that uh, semi-final, it can just immediately turn a terrible uh, potential turn of a Cannonade switch in for the Gastron into a great one, which is going for Energy Ball, and then you get the Cannonade off. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's something we uh, pick up pick up on uh, after this one, even if the, the Sun team inevitably wins, as it always does, uh, going into this. I'm sure we'll see a, a bit more Grass-type move Calyrex going forward. Uh, Jamie, I feel like you're going to bring six Grass-type Pokemon uh, mm -hmm. coming up to Frankfurt, possibly, <laughs> right? Um, you know, but no, like you said, there is, this is one of those times where I've seen a lot of really interesting team concepts come up because of the team that Rinya Kobayashi was, you know, pioneered, uh, for this format. And those six Pokemon have just been absolutely everywhere, but I feel like you're going to start seeing there's no more hidden power grass, right? That's not something that you can <laughs> tech onto any Pokemon much as maybe you wish that we could. Uh, but you might see maybe some different grass type moves like you saw with that energy ball and even maybe something like the emergence of maybe more Amoongus or more Rillaboom in the format, something to just kind of ta handle something like a Gastron coming up or even just some of those, even a Groudon, it's not going to love taking a Grassy Glide as long as you can get it maybe with some rain over its head. Yeah, you got to have some grass somewhere at this point because <laughs> Gastron is so prevalent. Uh, we've seen it already teched on. I'm sure we'll see a lot more techs uh, going forward, especially because this was a closed team sheet format. The uh, European International that is coming up as well, that is going to be a closed team sheet format. So uh, you can tech on all those surprise moves and you we saw how impactful that was just a turn one win in the semi-finals. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that picking up, especially because you do need to counter this Sun team. You very much need to counter this Sun team. So we will see if Francesco has the answer for it in their team. Uh, we are going to be jumping into the match very shortly. Uh, we can see uh, their team one more time. Zashian and Calyrex pairing with that Blastoise, Incineroar, Rillaboom, and Regieleki going up against the classic Rinya Sun. Yeah, and this is true. I I know this is going to seem so cheesy for me, right? But this almost feels like that red versus blue matchup with that Charizard <laughs> and that Blastoise. I know there's no Pikachu, like we may have seen a little bit at Salt Lake, which was definitely fun to have gotten our eyes on. But this Sun team has been absolutely so dominant, and you can see how Francesco is just, he's scrolling through his Pokemon, right? I'm sure he has a game plan. You have to kind of flowchart for a matchup like this, but even still, it's it's tough to deal with, right? And you don't have something like a Kyogre to change that weather, and your Blastoise Cannonade, it doesn't set the rate. Yeah, and that's one of the slight downsides of it. It would be lovely if you could boost the power of the Cannonade, but uh, the one sick damage is going to be very impactful as well. The rain changing would have been very nice for uh, this team, but yeah, it's no, no option for that at all. You've got the Regieleki that can outspeed the Charizard at least and do some good damage, but then you have to contend with the two ground types that could be switching in at any point. So uh, Regieleki is always a bit awkward to bring into these uh, into this Sun matchup because it is so good against the Charizard, and it is normally most people's greatest answer against the Charizard, but is so negative against the, the partners that it has, like the Groudon and the uh, Gastron. We'll have to see if that is going to be uh, brought in the face of potential Charizard coming out here, because it's just a very passive lead coming out from Antonio with that Crimson uh, and the Incineroar here, uh, but it is going to be the Blastoise and the Cataract coming out uh, for for uh, Francesco's side of the field, so we'll be able to get some uh, good damage going with the uh, GMS Cannonade to come out from the Blastoise. Groudon would have to switch in to reduce the damage output coming from that. Uh, we could still see the same thing we happened in the semi-final. We saw this 
this lead uh, in the turn one. Who knows? There could be a Gastron waiting in the back there uh, that could be a fall victim to an energy ball, but maybe Antonio would have seen the stream. Uh, who knows at this point? There's lots of mind games with that Gastron is waiting in the back. So uh, going to be a very interesting turn one here. Uh, whether you do go for the energy ball just to cover for the Gastron switch in. Uh, so that does make it very safe. There's no offensive pressure on the Blasters at this point. It could take a passing shot, but then if you get the cannonade off into the Incineroar, it might not be taking a passing shot because you might have gotten that KO. So I have to see the mind games here because I'm sure that uh, Gastron switching in would have happened uh, if Antonio uh, was just facing Francesco normally and if they do have it in the back they may not even have it in the back uh, ground on session would be great into this matchup but we'll have to see uh, what's going to happen this turn one because there is at least a Dynamax coming up for Francesco on that first turn with there being a Dynamax, I, mean, I believe that that means that there is no switch here right to that Gastron. But almost like you're saying, this is called the road to Frankfurt, right? If you're in Frankfurt, you're getting the same information that these players may be getting by watching the stream. If you've got your friends running over, like, Francesco's running an Energy Ball Calyrex. Be careful with, you know, be careful bringing in Gastron. Because this Cannonade is going to be able to do a ton of damage here. However, a Light Screen is going to come up from this Grimmsnarl, protecting its partner Pokemon Incineroar. Incineroar is, uh, Calyrex actually going for that Energy Ball. Made the play, made the call into that Incineroar, who comfortably takes that there. But that little bit of chip damage with this Cannonade, this G-Max Cannonade, into the Grimmsnarl slot. I have to, oh, actually the Incineroar slot, interesting. So they went for that double target just to be safe. However... Um, that Incineroar did not get the full knockout here, and it takes a parting shot onto that Blastoise on Francesco's side to allow it to switch in and out again. Yeah, and the interesting thing now is that Incineroar is in range of Cannonade Chip, but it's not on the field anymore. It's going to switch out with that parting shot. Uh, so if it does come in at any point in the next few turns and get maybe like a fake out to stall out a turn, it would then just drop to the Cannonade at the end of the turn. So uh, quite an interesting position now, and so it does free up the Calyrex quite a bit because you've done a lot of damage to one of the Dark Types. Uh, on the field and Sashin is going to be the Pokemon switching in here. Uh, most likely still going to be that Groudon waiting in the back. That would be much more effective than the Gastron would at this point. Unless you are very much fearing the Blastoise. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the Cannonade chip is still going to be very impactful. That extra bit of chip uh, may put the Zashin in range of something like the Behemoth Blade later on in the match. Because uh, any bit of chip allows that Zashin to be able to be put, put in range of that. So uh, quite a nice turn for Francesco. Still covering the central switch in of the Gastron there. Uh, you've got to be reasonably confident at this point that there is no Gastron because it would have probably switched in uh, on that turn one if there was. Yeah, Calyrex goes for that Protect here as well, not wanting to take any damage from the Zacian, who also goes for its own Protect, trying to stall out these very important Dynamax turns from this Black Stoice, who goes for another Cannonade that is going to go into that Zacian slot, who is protecting here as well, so it does very little damage, it's not as effective there. Um, as you know it would be without that protect however i believe that that was a scary face uh into the za into the calyrex slot like if i'm getting great at italian which apparently i might be i think that was a foul play going into the, foul play. Into the, into the calyrex that makes so sense. uh it started with effort least, so that's what i'm going with so yeah uh, that would have still done very good damage to the calyrex absolutely brought it down to its focus asha but you can see there the zashian even though going for the protect it took the passive damage from the gmax cannonade and now that is definitely in range of a zashian behemoth blade and probably Probably two Astral Barrages at this point, even with the light screen. So uh, even going for the very passive plays, uh, keeping yourself safe from the cannonades, you're still taking that extra damage and it does add up over time. It's, we've seen it be so impactful over so many tournaments uh, with the Venusaurs and the Charizards and the Colossus as well. Blastoise does the same thing. It gets that G-Max cannonade going. Uh, it's going to do some very good good chip damage as well. And uh, Incineroar is going to switch M for the Incineroar, so probably going to try and soak up the final G-Max move because uh, it is going to just be fainting at the end of this turn, even if it doesn't take that cannonade that goes into the room not instead. Yeah, absolutely. And it is going to be uh, possibly dealing with a Astral Barrage here as well, just to get a little bit of extra chip, possibly an important Grim Nay boost if it's able to get that knockout and allow for this Calyrex to go for some pretty powerful attacks in the upcoming turns. Grim Snarl is not able to get under half of its HP there, thanks to that light screen that was uh, uh, brought on earlier by that Grim Snarl. But again, that Grim Nay boost is going to impact this game more later in the turn. As this uh, cannonade goes into the Grim Snarl, again, that light screen is absolutely paying dividends for Antonio. And there we go, that foul play, I believe. Or no, is that. Yeah, that was Spirit Break. break. That was Spirit Break. Okay, I truly, I you could tell me any move that I know Grim Snarl doesn't have, and I still would believe you, Jamie. 
I just went off it beginning with <laughs> F there, so uh, that was just an incorrect assumption from me. So Spirit Break makes sense as well. Gonna break the Focus Slash regardless on the Calyrex. Uh, get, get rid of that uh, Grim Nade boost that it got to cancel it out, so it's not gonna be doing as much damage. Uh, but the Grim Snarl is so low at this point, it's gonna be in range of Astral Barrage most likely, and then you just be able to get that Grim Nade going again. Uh, but at least you've broken the Focus Slash so that the Groudon coming in, uh, you've able to set up the Sun, so the Blastoise won't be able to do as much. You've used up the Gigantamax of the Blastoise, so and now you can respond in kind with your own Groudon going for its own Dynamax at this point. Uh, it's currently Assault West, but it's so classically runs on this team. Uh, it's going to be able to shrug off all the attacks from the, the Calyrex and the Blastoise. It does still have to contend with that will -O -S that could be coming up from the Calyrex as well. There's not too many ways that it could be stopping it. If you go for something like a Scary Face or a Thunder Wave, you could be able to. And then your Groudon will be able to outspeed and be able to pick up the knockout with either a Plesh. It could go for just Press Press Blades at this point. That should be able to pick up the knockout on the Calyrex. Uh, unless it goes for the switch into the Incineroar to be able to get the Intimidate down. Uh, if you do get Intimidated, Max Base probably still picking up a knockout on the Calyrex. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like a Speed Control, Thunder Wave, or Scary Face into the Calyrex, and then get the Max Plate going into the Calyrex, because that is very safe at this point. Uh, but then you do obviously have to contend with something like a Yawn into the, the Groudon that the Blastoise has to go for. So uh, there's not particularly any safe avenues for Antonio this time. Probably does need to be going for the Dynamax uh, with the Groudon here. Because it is going to be the only Pokemon that would want to be going for the Dynamax here. And it is still at full health as well. You want to be making the most of your, your Dynamax turns. But being intimidated here is not going to be a good start for it. Yeah, Incinera was that switch out for Calyrex on Francesco's side. Antonio, though, going for that Dynamax, that Groudon, who's going to be able to put on some nice pressure with those Max Quakes, uh, able to get that special defense boost that it would really need, possibly facing down this Calyrex, even though it was brought back down to neutral for whenever it comes back in onto the field, or even something like a Hydro Cannon from this Blastoise at some point in the future. However, that Grimstarl, I believe, went for a uh, Thunder Wave or a Scary Face there, but that Prankster One ability does block. That Prankster ability does block with that dark typing however a max quake is enough to finish off that incinerator easily with a critical hit to boot so i'm sure antonio can't be all too mad about that even if that wasn't the calyrex he was hoping for yeah, it's a pretty in impactful critical hit. Incineroar's are almost certainly going to be able to survive that intimidated uh, Max Quake there, but that does seem like it is going to be a Yawn. That is at least a status mm. move, so uh, one would assume that is a Yawn coming out into that Groudon. And that is going to really limit the turns of Dynamax, especially because the Cannonade is still adding up here and taking care of the Grimstar. Groudon can't switch out anymore, so it's definitely going to sleep at the end of this turn. So that puts uh, Francesco in a very, very solid position here. Blastoise probably can't protect itself, but whichever restricted you bring in, whether it's the Zashin or the Calyrex, should be able to just go for the protect use up the last turn of the dynamax of the Groudon, and then you're going to be able to take care of the opposing Zashin pretty comfortably because it's taken so much chip. I believe it's just over half health at this point. Zashin's Behemoth Blade would be able to take care of it from that range of health. Uh, Calyrex would probably be able to two shot it with an Astral Barrage at this point, factoring in the light screen that was set up. Uh, so either Pokemon doesn't really matter which restricted you go into. You just go for a protect, stall at the last turn, and uh, maybe go for a yawn into the opposing Zashin as well in case your Blastoise is able to survive the turn. Maybe go for an Icy Wind to guarantee that your Zashin is definitely faster uh, so that there's no potential speed ties or anything that could come out as well uh, but it is a very very strong position for francesco very good decision to not to go for the willow spin to the crowd on yawn is going to be much more impactful into it because it's just going to put a stop to the damage coming out rather than halving it it's just going to put a stop to it completely in the next couple of turns so i uh, wouldn't be surprised if we just see the protect coming out from the cataracts and whether it is just a yawn or an icy wind at this point from the blastoise Either would be fine in putting a stop to the Zashin, because if you go for the Yawn and get it off, you could just go on the offensive, and then your Zashin waiting in the back is just going to be able to be free to hit the Behemoth Blade into it at this point. And yeah, we are seeing the Protect from the Calyrex. Yeah, like you said, Jamie, Calyrex just trying to stall out the rest of these turns from Groudon so that it gets put to sleep nice and quickly. However, that play rough from the... Uh Zashin into the Blastoise does a huge amount of damage along with that Max Steel Spike into the Calyrex. Through that Protect though, brings that Calyrex just to under half of its HP, but it's pretty happy to take that as this Groudon is going to be going to sleep, even though it gets that defense boost uh, moving forward for that Zashin in the back. Yeah, and so it's not really going to be too impactful here because the Zashin is going to sleep at the end of the next <laughs> turn. Groudon is going to sleep at the... Uh at this point so uh, you just get to go for all the astral barrages at this point you'll be able to go for a behemoth blades in the future as well uh, you can go for an icy win with your blastoise as well to make, get, make sure that you're faster with the opposing zashin uh, so yeah you just need the tiniest bit of chip and astral barrage will do that the steel spike was quite nice to be able to potentially allow the zashin to decide the behemoth blade you just need one astral barrage at this point to be able to uh, put it in range of that behemoth blade so uh, still looking pretty comfortable for francesco we're going to be playing some sleep games so it uh, depends how many turns the the groudon will be uh, staying a Staying asleep for, but that is a nice tech coming out from the Blastoise. 
Yeah, that helping hand with this Astro Barrage does a ton of damage onto both of these Pokemon. Not enough to get the knockout, but definitely enough to do a lot of damage as this Sashin goes for that Behemoth Blade into the Calyrex slot. This should pretty easily pick up the knockout here, and it does. However, you've got Sashin waiting in the back. Your Sashin's about to fall asleep. If this Groudon does not wake up on this turn, you're in a pretty tough spot moving forward, and it does not. You get another turn of sleep here, and I don't know how much more sun we have, but I don't think it's all that much, Jamie, and uh, Hydro Cannon from a Blastoise would be pretty fun at any point. I think it should be two more because I'm pretty sure the ground will hit the field and then Dynamax straight away. So that would be Correct. the three turns of the sun. So should be two more. Uh, so you do need to stall out a couple more turns to be able to do some good damage with the Hydro Cannon. Uh, but you can see that the Helping Hand is going to be pretty impactful. Uh, helping Hand Behemoth Blades will be pretty close on that ground on uh, when it is able to pick up the knockouts. And if it's not, you've still have got the potential of it staying asleep. And if it does wake up and does survive the Helping Hand uh, going, coming out into the ground on as well, it could potentially just pick up a double knockout with Precipice Blade, so it's actually not completely over yet uh, at all. Uh, Groudon just lands a Precipice Blade. Uh, we can see there, but we can get the sneak peek of the HP as well. That is not a bulky Zashian, so it should be able to just be KO'd by the uh, Precipice Blade. But there was an Intimidate earlier from the Incineroar, so actually it should be able to survive that attack. And that does make the end game a little bit more comfortable. Uh, if you go for the Helping Hands Behemoth Blade, that could potentially knock out the Groudon. Uh, you could go for something like an Icy Winds, just to guarantee that your Zashian is uh, faster. Going into the next turn, if you're not expecting the Helping Hand Behemoth Blade to be able to pick up the Groudon. And uh, it does seem like it is just going for on the offensive here. No helping hand, so most likely going to be an icy wind coming out as well. Yeah, that uh, behemoth play from one Zashin into the nether is it enough to get that knockout on the sleeping Zashin on Antonio's side. A critical hit, but you and I both know that that does not matter when you are less than 25% of your HP uh, against a behemoth blade here. Groudon takes another turn of sleep, which I'm sure is very frustrating for Antonio as this icy wind will be able to do some more damage, but it continue to slow it down. So this Groudon, you know, if there's a precipice blades, there's a way, Jamie. Uh, you can always get lucky, but also if you're on the opposite side for Francesco, if there's a precipice Blades, there's a way in terms of winning, maybe <laughs> hoping for some misses here. Yeah, that, that was potentially a way back into the game because the Zashin targeted the opposing Zashin there. Uh, two Precipice Blades should be able to pick up the knockout on the Zashin. It'd be pretty close if it's going to pick up the knockout on the Blastoise as well. Uh, so if it did wake up that turn, uh, you could have potentially just won with uh, two Precipice Blades at that point. Uh, but Helping Hand is definitely the correct choice here with one turn left in the sun, then you can go for Hydro Hand on the next turn instead. Yeah, Helping Hand plus this Behemoth Blade here going into this Groudon. Francesco trying to wrap up his victory for this weekend. However, he's going to need one more of those. And Groudon takes its third turn of sleep. So that means pretty comfortably that Francesco is going to be able to wrap up his finals here out of 485 players, I believe, in this victory road to Frankfurt Tour. And Jamie, I'm a little bit secretly happy that we saw something that beat this Sun team. I gotta do it one more time though, so it's just, it's just gonna just be taking care of the ground on in the first game. It was, could have been just a critical hit that uh, it would have only been a critical hit Precipice Blaze that would have been able to pick up the knockout on the Zashin because they're. I'm not, don't think I'm making up that there was an Intimidate earlier on the Groudon, so uh, Zashin would have needed to be, be critical hit there for it to have a chance, but just, just stay, stay asleep for uh, the whole three turns, so. Uh, not going to be too impactful uh, in, unless the critical hit did come out for the Precipice Blades. But yeah, that is going to be a pretty comfortable game one win for uh, coming out for Francesco. And oh God, the Sun team has... One. It's only game I am, one. I am I know, so sorry, everyone. I, know, I have I know, a fever right now. I know, I'm you very want, sick. I know you want Sun matches to be over as quickly oh as possible, but we've got to get through at least one more. Maybe another one if the Sun is able to fight back. So uh, yeah, the, there's, it's good, pretty comfortable for uh, Francesco. It seemed in the driving seat for most of that match. Uh, I have fever brain right now, Jamie. Boy, you are a saint for dealing with me. I am so sorry. Chat, I'm so sorry. Francesco, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry we have to deal with Sun, but here it is still. So maybe only one more match, but uh, the, the, Antonio was definitely not out of that match by any means. The three turn sleep does not help at all. Uh, so if it did wake up, maybe in one turn, it could have got two Precipice Blades and two Precipice Blades would have most likely uh, been able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Zashin, even with the Intimidate, because a, like, a not uh, very invested bulk Sashian is just knocked out in one shot by Precipice Blades. That is not a very bulky Sashian, so uh, two Precipice Blades even Intimidated should still be able to do it. So it uh, was actually a pretty close endgame, and the Yawn was very impactful uh, coming out for Francesco's side of the field. If you could, if you could have gone for, Willow, gone for the Willow Spin instead, uh, it wouldn't have been doing as much damage, but it would have still been doing damage, and that would have been the crucial part. So quite a nice decision to go for the Yawn, and definitely paying off uh, completely with the full three turns of the sleep. Uh, if it does wake up after one turn, it could have potentially been Antonio's uh, game. So uh, nicely played from both players and Antonio being able to get into a position where it seemed like Francesco was in the driving seat the whole time, into a position where they could have potentially come back 
uh, even with uh, with just some less sleep turns coming out uh, from the Blastoise. Uh, but that was quite no quite a nice showing for the Cap Blastoise and the Calyrex there. There was no uh, Gastrodon Brawl to talk this match, so you don't have to be firing off those energy balls uh, on that first turn. But this is definitely a switch up here. This is going to be the Charizard and the Groudon led uh, immediately for Antonio's side of the field. And it is still going to be into that Blastoise and the Calyrex. So you've got the fake out pressure onto the opposing Groudon or the Charizard. You've got to probably pick up which one's going to be going for the Dynamax here because both reasonably could. Uh, Groudon could be going for the Max Quakes to be able to take on the uh, Astral Barrages and the uh, G-Max Cannonade a lot better, which is not going to be doing as much damage thanks to the Sun being up. Uh, but then the Charizard could just be going on the on the offensive because it has that uh, very, very powerful attacks coming up with the Solar Power. Do you go for a Yawn as well inside either of the Pokemon? Because if you manage to catch the Dynamax Pokemon uh, with the Yawn, you're going to be able to put a stop to it immediately as well. Uh, because the Blastoise, if it goes for the Dynamax here, the Cannonade won't be doing as much damage, even into the Summon like the Charizard or the Groudon, which are both super effective. Uh, it's effectively back to neutral at this point. Uh, so do you value the extra damage that won't knock them out and won't be able to go for anything like a Yawn at all? Or do you value that extra chip that you get from the G-Max Cannonade enough? To still go for the Dynamax uh, in the sun, and it's at least going to be a Dynamax coming out for Antonio's side of the field. So we have to look, wait a little bit to see if that Blastoise is going to be going for uh, that Dynamax, but it is going to be the Dynamax coming out here for that Charizard. So uh, we're going to be getting at least one one Pokemon going for the Gigantamax to get that passive damage going. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. Thank you so much for covering me there. A little bit of a, a little bit of a coughing fit. I again, very sorry, chat. Dynamax, uh, Gigantamax Charizard here is going to be able to still put on a lot of pressure if it is able to, you know, get something like a Max Airstream. We saw how important those were for Antonio in prior games during this tournament. However, it is facing off against its nemesis, that Gigantamax Blastoise. G-Max Cannonades, we also didn't see a switch, so that also means that Gastrodon possibly didn't come to this game either. So, you know, no worries here about possibly going for something like an Energy Ball, and this uh, Astral Barrage into both of these Pokemon does a pretty nice amount of damage, while a Max Airstream from the Charizard Charizard into the Blastoise is just under 50% of that HP, but will get the speed up for the Pokemon on Antonio's side, and the only form of speed control that Francesco has right now available would be a non-Dynamax Blastoise Icy Wind. However, it is a ton of damage there from, I believe, a Precipice Blades, while the uh, Cannonade from this uh, Blastoise into both of the, into the Charizard here is enough to get the Ooh, knockout. Wow. So that means there is no G-Max Wildfire in this game, which is absolutely crucial, I think, for Francesco moving forward. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, things that uh, players don't take into account is the torrent that comes out from the Blastoise, and it always does way more damage than you would expect when it gets down to that below third of the range, which it did end up doing thanks to the airstream and the Prestoise Blades. I may not have been able to pick up the knockout on the Charizard without that torrent, but it does some serious damage. It effectively gets a free life orb uh, when it does get into that torrent range, so uh, that's why the Charizard was able to be KO'd there. If the Charizard would have been able to survive, you would have been able to go for that Wildfire and the Prestoise Blades. There's nothing that's really stopping that at this this point and then you could be able to get the passive damage going but now it's only the passive damage on Antonio so I feel thanks to that cannonade you're still not in a, a bad position by any means uh, losing the Charizard because you've got uh, at least an airstream boost on the Groudon so it's going to be outspeeding uh, at least the Blastoise we'll have to see how the Groudon is trained if it's able to outspeed the Calyrex as well uh, if it is able to outspeed the Calyrex uh, it does have to be run very very fast and most of the Groudons on this team are run very bulky uh, so the Calyrex should be able to still outspeed here but just going to keep itself safe for this turn by going for Protect. Yeah, that Protect will protect it from any sort of double targeting move that Groudon could give. However, this Behemoth Blade from the Zosh and into the Blastoise, that is going to be easily enough to take it out of the game. But I feel like this Blastoise did exactly what it wanted to do, which was to get that G-Max Cannonade of residual damage every single turn onto the Pokemon on Antonio's side for the next several turns. And, you know, now at least it's going to be able to uh, do a decent chunk of damage. However, no damage from that Groudon onto that uh, Zosh, which would have been nice single target damage. Yeah, it would have almost certainly been able to pick up the knockout on that Calyrex as well. Uh, we can see that the Groudon's still under speed in the Zashin, even with the speed boost, so it's definitely going to be one of those bulky Groudons coming out. Uh, but that means the Calyrex is able to outspeed and potentially get another, another Astral Barrage off. Uh, the Groudon is very low at this point, uh, probably still be able, able to survive an Astral Barrage coming out here. Uh, but so you do now have fake out pressure on the field uh, coming out for Francesco's side of the field. You've got Intimidate as well to be able to uh, reduce the damage output of both Groudon and the and the Zashian as well. Uh, Precipice Blades, after that Intimidate, uh, given the damage it did before, because that was the damage from the previous Precipice Blades, uh, may not be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Calyrex here. So you could just go for a fake out into the Zashian and Astral Barrage. And then there's not too much that can be done to respond by Antonio. The Precipice Blades, if it's not able to knock out the Calyrex, would be very impactful. But you may need to commit to something like a Heat Crash or uh, something like that to be able to pick up the knockout. 
back out in the cataracts, and then that would mean you're not attacking the incineroar with the press of his blade. So uh, still quite in a nice position for Francesco, getting the intimidate down, allowing the cataracts to be able to do what it wants. Uh, two astral barrages will be very impactful here as well, especially with the cannonade still adding up. Uh, pro probably enough to be able to pick up the knockout on the ground. It should have been able to survive at least the astral barrage, but would have been put in range of that cannonade most likely. That's probably why it's switching out here into incineroar, which is definitely going to be able to want to take the astral barrage. Yeah, and Incineroar showing that that is the last Pokemon here for Antonio as well. Incineroar, you know, going to be able to put some fake out pressure on the opposing Incineroar while Zacian on Antonio's side goes for a protect. However, the Incineroar on Francesco's side is not able to get what I believe is a Flare Blitz off, and then Astro Barrage will also go into that protect slot on that Zacian here. The Astro Barrage, though, into the Incineroar does still a little bit of chip damage, and I think every bit of chip damage, along with that residual damage every single turn, thanks to that Cannonade, is really important for Francesco yeah, when you're running both Calyrex and Zashin, any chip damage is very impactful. And that that's noticed. That I wouldn't start calling that chip damage now. When no, you're that is no, that's more than health. chip. So, so that is in range of Sacred Sword now from the Zashin. Even if you probably intimidate it, it'll be pretty close if that's going to be in range. So uh, every bit of chip definitely helps. And you can see the cannon they just still adding up. Uh, there was the potential to go for the Wildfire uh, for Antonio with their Charizard, but opting for the Airstream instead uh, meant that they just lost the Charizard and the opportunity to get that passive damage. The Calyrex is sat on the field the entire game, it would have probably been KO'd to three rounds of Wildfire at this point. So uh, a little bit of a missed opportunity maybe there uh, coming out for the Charizard, uh, maybe not factoring in the Torrent boost that the Blastoise gets. But now the Calyrex is still able to just launch off once again, just another Astral Barrage if it wants to, and it definitely seems to want to. Yeah, and I did say uh, Flare Blitz, and I totally meant Fake Out. I am mixing up my uh, mixing up some words today. However, Astral Barrage not mixing up on either of these two Pokemon does a ton of damage, but a Sacred Ooh. Sword does a ton with a critical hit. Super effective attack onto that Incineroar. Thankfully, holding the Citrus Berry as this 9 HP will at least be able to bounce back up to a slightly higher number. However, that means it's not going to be able to take another one of those. And now from... <laughs> Excuse me, a throw trap from this Incineroar onto the Calyrex. That Dark type move able to take care of that Calyrex on this turn. Not able to get any Grim Nabus here, but the Flare Blitz from the Incineroar onto the Zacian. Able to pick up that knockout. Will it knock itself out in the process? I do not believe so, just because of that Citrus Berry, which is so important as we move forward. And now the Incineroar on Antonio's side, once again taking more chip, uh, chip damage, I say, and we're almost down to a quarter of its HP here, Jake. Yeah, and we've got the full HP Zashian waiting in the back. Uh, it's not going to be able to be intimidated anymore, so it's going to be able to just pick up the knockout on either Pokemon at this point. It will be able to pick up the knockout on the ground on because it is at such low health. It is going to be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Incineroar as well, so uh, as, as Groudon is most likely going to be carrying the Assault Vest, if you go for the knockout into the opposing Groudon, you've got to go for Flare Blitz to KO the Zashian, and then that recoil would KO yourself, and even if it doesn't, Incineroar could follow up, follow up uh, with the KO at that point, so I wouldn't be surprised if we just see the Behemoth Blade into Groudon. That would be a very very safe play and should be a, a secured win for Francesco if they do follow that uh, because you can definitely pick up the knockout on this ground on and the only way is the flare that's recall and then you'll just be going out on your own terms. Yeah, this behemoth blade into the ground on takes out that last remaining restricted for Antonio and it puts Incineroar against a lot of Pokemon that it doesn't really want to be facing up against here. Incineroar burning jealousy though into both of these Pokemon, just trying to get some double target, maybe a critical hit onto that Zashin, but not enough there. Incineroar here, Flare Blitz onto the other Incineroar for Antonio, able to almost get it. However, I believe that there should still be this last section of chip. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know what? That might actually be the end of it, Jamie. It does look like it, but I'm pretty sure it does not matter in the slightest with that Zashian. i still going to be able to outspeed that Incineroar, so Sun is not going to win this tournament. Uh, so uh, commiserations to Antonio, but personally I am quite happy that Sun did not win another tournament. So uh, very, very strong showing from Francesco there. Uh, so a really cool team coming out, some great text to be able to deal with the Sun matchup. So they, they took it in a comfortable 2-0 fashion there. Uh, the Energy Ball is a very, very nice pick on the Cadarex. It makes that Gastrodon so much more tricky to bring to that match and that frees up the Blaster. You could see the impact of that Cannonade. Even in the Sun, it didn't matter that we were in the Sun. Francesco decided the Cannonade is worth, worth going for that Gigantamax and you could see it add up. So uh, yeah, very, very fantastic showing for Francesco, who is going to be the Victory Road to Frankfurt champion. I'm glad I by accident. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that is, that is going to be uh, the end of the, this tournament. So we'll have to see what impact this is going to be uh, having on actual Frankfurt that is going to be coming up very shortly. Uh, whether we are going to see Sun still dominate, whether we're going to see all those uh, texts coming out from the, the teams uh, for the adaptation. Because if you are going to Frankfurt, you need to be ready for that Sun team. It seemed like Francesco was ready for that Sun team. So that is going to be it from us. Thank you very much for watching. And we will hopefully see some of you in the EUIC in actual Frankfurt.